Part three, damn it. So, I got both channels working just fine. That cycling problem is not the transistors, um, plus they, I don't think they would do that on their own. It's, this board is bad. Now, I still haven't swapped the op amps with, I, I took the board, uh, or the, the whole controller board out of this older one, which uses the same module. Um, a known working module, put it in there uh, on that one. Figuring, I thought channel A was bad. No, turn that off. Um, no, I was wrong. Uh, either I have something hooked up wrong or something, but because um, you can get these mixed up and and in mixed inputs and and, uh, and the whole nine yards. I swapped boards with channel A, and I was still getting the problem. I was perplexed. So I did that with channel B, and it fixed the problem. So it's channel B. The card on channel B is faulty. Um, channel A. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Um, first, before I swap the op amps between board and board, I'm gonna swap boards. And uh, well, actually, no. Never mind. Um, what am I thinking here? But you can see this is a completely different, different series of board. There's film caps. The film caps are different on this one. Oh, every, whole nine yards is everything's different. But it's all still off the shelf parts, and they're all still the same values. They're just a, this one's from the 70s, and this one's from the 80s. Same part. But I, like I said, got it working. So. It's something on this board. Now, to determine whether it's something, to determine whether it's the op amps or any other thing on here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the op amps between this board and the known working board here from the 70s version here without the DDT compression. You can see that the input boards are different. I recapped these. I used the caps that I had on hand. They're all new, so um, but the caps are a little different, but they're the same value and uh, made a big difference actually. I'm going to swap the op amps. I'm just going to pause the camera because this will take two seconds. I'm not going to do it without, while filming because I have to discharge those main filter caps as well. Just using these. And um, I'll see what happens. I will say this. I had that hooked up to the top rail here, which is channel A, supposedly. And um, when I took the op amps out of this one, which is channel A, it caused that to do something different. And that's what is that makes me wonder if I have something hooked up backwards. But I did that with that one, and I had the channels reversed. They weren't out of phase; it's just left and right was right and left. Um, but it worked just fine. So once I once I track down what part is bad um, and what's causing the issue, um, then I can fix that wiring issue because it's easy to get these uh, mixed up. I might have one of them labeled wrong. I have them marked one and two. And uh, 1, A, and B, those can be mixed up as well. And uh, let me go ahead and do that. So my plan was to take the chips that were on the noisy board, put it on the good board, see if those chips would do the same thing on the good board. And upon taking out, I broke a damn leg off. So I had to take a capacitor, cut the lead off. Nothing's ever easy. So I had to solder that on there. It's fairly stiff. I don't know if I damaged the chip soldering onto it. I hope I didn't. Got the new chip in there, and here's the moment of truth. Um, so we know that that board's good, but we don't know if the chipset is good. Here's the chipset from that board, and we'll go ahead and go ahead and test it. Aha! There we go. So the chips are well. As far as I know, um, we could have popped the board, but. So, we know that those chips are probably bad. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the new chip uh, set back in there, see if the board's still good. That way we know that it's the op amps that are bad more than likely. Now, the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, this chip complement here, or chip set, and put it in the old board and see if it'll work. That way we can verify everything else is good on here. Now after I do all this repairs, I'm going to recap this board so um, these caps aren't staying. Um, but they're healthy caps still, but I like to recap them. So, at least we know that those chips are causing some problems uh, on the new board. The new chipset is installed. Let's go ahead and turn the power on. Now, if it's bad, I'm going to get very angry. 
Now if it's good, I'll be okay. Aha! Uh -huh. Might not have any, there we go, turn the uh, audio up here, make sure it's still good. So we figured out that it's either one of these or both. I'm gonna replace them both as a, as a set and do it in both sides of this amp. It's one of these chips. I'm definitely replacing this one. I had to custom manufacture a freaking leg for it. But at least now we know it's the op amps. My friends on Facebook will be pleased to know because I've been keeping, I've been giving them a constant upkeep in uh, news about these things. Sounds pretty good. Nothing wrong with a good, good amount of Def Leppard on uh, a good old amp. But now we know that that's not the, uh, the, the board isn't the issue, at least not in this case. Um, the board still could be the problem. The board here could be the reason why those chips failed. So I'm still kind of hesitant, but I'm going to take the chip set off of this one. I'm going to put it on this one, then I'm going to put this as a whole in here and see if it works. <clears throat> that way we can test everything else. Remember to always discharge your capacitors. Doesn't matter how big they are, they can still pack a punch. You saw that one spark. I saw the freaking viewfinder. I always do it a couple times and make sure you do it with a set of insulated, well insulated pliers. Looking at this board here, the TLO72 chip is here and the TLO71, this, these are different part numbers from this model of unit, um, but they do fun do the same function. This is the TLO72, it's uh, like up here near the big juicy blue capacitor. The other one is a TLO71, um, is up here. We are all installed. This board is from that set of amplifier. Now, let's cross our fingers here that this board that I put these chips in will not pop these op amp chips. Um, I'm not thinking it will. I'm thinking that um, these op amps are just bad, um, except for the ones I just put in there. Let's go ahead and test it. What do you know? Let's give it a bit more audio here. So, let's go ahead and uh, hook up one of the PA speakers I had up to the other channel. So I figured out that basically it was the op amp chips that were bad. They were sending their DC rail into the pow power amplifier section and I think all the power amp was doing was amplifying what, what it was getting. Um, so now we have figured out what's wrong. I'm going to go ahead and put the good chip complement, um, I call it a complement, good chip set, back into its original place. Put that back together, test it, make sure it works. Jam out to some music while I'm putting this one back together. And I'm going to search up online of how much this, these chips cost. I also got a new phone. Terrible. Well, there you go. Basically, you get why I got a new phone. But... Yeah, that threw me off, I'm sorry about that. But now, all I have to do is take those chips out, put it in that one, leave them in there, quit taking them in and putting them out. I need a chip puller. I've been using a flathead screwdriver in my pure pressure. But we now know that it was the chips that were bad. We can take these and I can order new ones. Um, now there's two different types of chips. There's the NE5534N up here on this side and for the other um, other section of this board there's a Texas Instruments RC 4558P and uh, from the other amplifier we have from this one is the same part as this one this one is a TLO 72CP this one is a TLO 71CP 
So there are some, probably just some discrete differences. Some probably sound better than others, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm sure the NE part was not an original part. That was just an afterthought um, by some other service person. These two are good, but when I do replace them, I'm going to get some for each one. So in case I'm going to have to switch over to these part numbers, because I know there will be a difference. I don't want there to be any difference at all, anything noticeable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to order all new op amp chips, and uh, that should be it. Um, and after I do that, I'll do some extensive testing and see whether it's necessary to recap these amp boards. If it's not, I'll leave them the way they are. They sound good the way they are. And uh, these older ones, see the date code on the capacitors, 7842. Those are Panasonic capacitors, commonly referred to as the Mitsubishi brand, but it's not. That's the Matsushita brand name, and that's the Matsushita logo. Looks very similar to the Mitsubishi, and there's quite... That's quite controversial, um, but there we go. Now we know that the op amp chips are uh, bad in that side. There are these here. I'm definitely not going to reuse that one. And I, I don't. And if um, there's the RC 4558P and the NE 5534 something, um, I'm just going to replace them both as a whole for each channel. So if you guys enjoyed this video series, um, and you have something to say, it's, and I hope it's something nice to say, um, let me know. Thank you for watching. Oh yeah, I sold that one, and I'm keeping this one. This will be running stereo. Uh, Project One Horn Tweeters over there have to finish them. So thank you for watching. Part three, damn it. So, I got both channels working just fine. That cycling problem is not the transistors. Um, plus, they, I don't think they would do that on their own. It's, this board is bad. Now, I still haven't swapped the op amps with, I, I took the board, uh, or the, the whole controller board out of this older one, which uses the same module. I swapped boards with channel A, and I'm still getting the problem. I was perplexed. So, I did that with channel B and it fixed the problem. So it's channel B, the card on channel B is faulty. Um, channel A, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, first before I swap the op amps between board and board, the 70s, this one's from the 80s, same part. But I, like I said, got it working. So, it's something on this board. Now, to determine whether it's something, to determine whether I'm gonna swap boards. And, uh, well, actually, no, never mind. Um, what am I thinking here? But you can see this is a completely different, different series of board. There's film caps. The film caps are different on this one. The oh, every, whole nine yards is everything's different, but it's all still off the shelf parts, and they're all still the same values. They're just a distance from. Um, a known working module, put it in there uh, on that one. Figuring, I thought channel A was bad. No, turn that off. Um, no, I was wrong. Uh, either I have something hooked up wrong or something, but because um, you can get these mixed up and in, in mixed inputs and, and, uh, and the whole nine yards. 